All right. Yep, we have some fencing to do. Okay. Sometimes in life you gotta you got to uh, use a little bit of uh, ingenuity in what you gotta do. Now what do you think that is? That is a um, barbed wire uh, unroller that fits in a mule. I uh, built it myself. Um, it's one of my first projects uh, I built when I started learning to weld and uh, it helps out tremendously. It allows me to be able to run barbed wire uh, by myself and uh, for a very long stretch and doesn't wear me out, which I'm always looking for. Okay, I'm going to put this thing in the uh, mule and be right so back. So here it is mounted in the mule. Um, you have right there, right there, go into the side. You don't really want to do it too much because you don't want to mess up your mule. Uh, but you do want it to be tight because the last thing you want is for this thing to come flying out of there if the wire hangs up while it's unrolling. A few staves. They have some better ones than that, but we, uh, we don't throw anything away. Okay. So, now, and this right char is the bar. Okay. Now, this is the way it works. I've taken that bar off and put it down here on the... Uh, on the uh, bed of the mule and I've run it through here now I had a little trouble getting it through here a lot of times these will be just too small to run the bar through we have to bend it back a little bit be really really careful about this weld right here see that weld where those two wires come together uh, you do not want that to come undone uh, but anyhow this is where it tests out your He-Man abilities because you have to lift it up and then set it up here. And I just threw my back out last night, so we're going to see if this completely dilapidates me. <laughs> All right, I don't have a tripod, so you're going to have to take my word. I'm doing this by myself. Okay, here it is. By the way, I always wear gloves with this even though you're dealing with just the bar because this thing slides back or forth and it will it'll tear your hands clean up uh, now as you see here the wire is coming from the bottom okay that's the way you want it if you take it and you turn it around where it's coming from the top uh, what will happen is is when you're unrolling it'll keep unrolling even after you stop it and it will cause a big problem so uh, uh, you have enough problem with it doing that while it's down. These right here, as the wire gets shorter, they do their job a lot better. I mean, as, as the roll gets smaller, but just have to be careful with it until then. All right, now time to go see about a fence. Okay, now this little stretch of uh, fence right here is down, ain't down that way. But it is down back that way, and it's always almost all the way to the ground. The problem is this is a floodplain, and this is where the uh, you can see the buildup of the um, brush and everything down there. 
um, the when it floods the current carries everything up against this fence uh, it does the same thing on the other side of the uh, creek over there and uh, causes me a lot of trouble but we have the handy dandy uh, uh, barbed wire dispenser and so I'm going to use the mule to pull that wire all the way down there it's really marshy down there and so I'm going to for now uh, just pull the wire down there and uh, be done with that uh, just have it up to where the cows can't get through then when it dries out I'll come back and put the post in okay and you can see the wire is run all the way down there. It's on the ground right now, but I'm fixing to use the barbed wire stretchers and pull it up. See it right there. And we're still connected to the uh, main line right here. But we're fixing to take the slack out of that and pull it up to about that level right there. Now, you don't have a timer, but I do. And at about, uh, this took me about from the time that I wired it up down there until the time that I pulled it back. This took me about oh, five to six minutes to put up 50 feet of fence. Not bad. Now I am going to have to put a, a post right there. It's going to be uh, for right now. It may just be a temporary situation, but i got to put one there to keep the fence up because there's just too much sag in it. But uh, I brought a couple just in case. Uh, but that, that shows you how quick you can do this. And I'm, I'm one man. I'm one man and doing this myself. So uh, it, it does show you how quick you can do it. Uh, as long as this thing works right. The main thing, feed the wire off the bottom of the road. If you don't, you will regret it. And feed only one roll at a time. This thing can hold two rows. We've tried it. They get, uh, they get too uh, messed up with each other. Uh, there would have to be some way of separating them, and I have a way in mind, but uh, one row does just fine for me. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, wanted to show you that. Okay, now there, I put two T-posts up. It's not like they were very difficult to uh, get in the ground. I wasn't as sorry as it is. Uh, this is temporary. Uh, I'll be coming back and putting some more up when the ground dries out. But, uh, and I can get to it because like right there, that's underwater. Right back over there, that's underwater. Uh, my main uh, objective right now is to get a fence up. And you can see it's, uh, they have a pretty clear, <laughs> clear runway there. So uh, anyhow, I got to have three more wires put up. And it should be about uh, seven, eight minutes uh, a piece if nothing goes wrong. <laughs> and um, so, <laughs> So, uh, uh, I'll uh, come back when I get it completed. Stay hydrated. I know you may not think a whole lot about that right now. If you're younger, <laughs> later on you will. Uh. <coughs> Just to let you know, my body wasn't telling me I wanted that. <coughs> but I need it. See, when you get to be a certain age, your body says, Oh, you're going to cut down on salt intake. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to make you regret that. Let the cramps begin. So, and they will. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out here, you see that fence right there? That's actually our fence. You see where I'm placing this fence right here? Uh, the way the plot yeah. is, is based on surveys. It's not based on where you put the fence. So, uh, uh, the fence can be, <laughs> fence can be out here in the middle of the field, uh, but where you, uh, but where you, uh, uh, where the survey says that it is. It's usually in these older, uh, properties, uh, the, the corner, Look, just flew in my mouth. The corner of a um, of a, uh, a property line 
uh, will have something like a, a piece of a railroad iron nailed into the ground because uh, you know they practically last forever and that's why they, they use them uh, as a typical rule. It could be anything, usually some kind of, some form of heavy steel. But uh, anyhow, so this is two. Uh, have another one to go. The, uh, be right back. Okay, I don't know if you can see the fence there, but I put some staves in there to keep the fence uh, where I don't have the posts where they need to be uh, to keep them um, uh, the correct distance apart uh, where they won't sag and uh, it's not sag as much but anyhow there it is it's a three wire fence it's enough to uh, keep the cattle in uh, four wires is the way to go I will be running another wire uh, when I put the post up when this thing dries out here in, in a week or so so um, anyhow that's the way we build fence on the ranch. One of the things that I want to show you, because I made a comment a while back to uh, someone on a video about watching out when you um, when you uh, are cutting a tree, because that tree is like 20 years old. Uh, something like this could have happened. Yeah, that's right. I connected it to a tree. I'm going to rerun this whole fence and put up cross fences. I mean, put up uh, put up uh, 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 stiff backs down it to um, to stretch to. But that's in the future. Right now, we're using this tree. That staple, when that tree grows past that staple, and it will, it'll grow past that staple. It'll grow past that wire. And if I come along and cut that wire, let's say when I run this fence again, uh, and it grows past where the wire was. The wire is completely hidden inside the tree. And if you go along and you're going to be sawing, especially with a chainsaw, uh, you're going to be uh, sawing that tree uh, lengthwise uh, to make boards. You hit that staple and all heck is going to break loose, up to including possibly your chain. So just be very careful when you're doing that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if, um, if, you know, that means anything to anybody, but, uh, let it happen to you once. I've hit staples before just cutting a tree, uh, uh cross section. And, uh, I can tell you, it's, um, it'll make a believer out of you. So, you know, take it or leave it. I'm actually back here looking for a cow right now on my way back out. Uh, this here is the creek that runs through our property. It is, uh, this is one of the prettiest spots um, on the creek. Um, we have a bridge that we built that goes, uh, goes across it, but uh, to the other side where the rest of our property is. But anyhow, I just this is so relaxing down here. It's just so quiet. You know, only only thing you hear is the is the water running. And uh, this this actually empties into the Natchez River. And uh, anyhow, just wanted to share that. It's. Um, Kind of a, kind of a uh, little bit of a flat area down here. Uh, be a pretty good spot for a picnic table, but uh, uh, we'll probably end up with a tree on it before it was over with. <laughs> Anyhow.